So today we're going to be working on this face here. Uh, you can see I've made progress on it already. Um, and I'm going to go back. I have recorded the steps as I was doing them of uh, doing a base coat with your initial um, shading values and then uh, moving forward with using artist pigment chalks to um, give the highlights and the low lights and do the contouring of the face. Uh, I don't think I covered eye adding the eyelashes, but I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for that already. I use UV gel as an adhesive. It's very easy to use. Well, go find the video and you'll see. Uh, it's, it's relatively easy. With this one, I decided only to put the top lashes. Let's see if you can see. Uh, and then I went ahead and um, gave it a try and put the bottom lashes in, and I kind of like it. I don't think it's too much. Um, I plan to finish this one up and put it for sale on uh, my Facebook page. Oops, wrong way. Boy, that's disorienting. I go left, it goes right. <laughs> but uh, that is her paint job so far. Well, she's done, actually. And... Um, so let's get to it. It's going to be white again in a second because this is a finished paint job and the video starts with the original just finished sculpt. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, do one final sand while I edited the... Uh, the tutorial itself. It's got a few little nicks and bruises. So I'm just going to take those off. This is probably a um, like an 80 grit or might even be a little bit coarser. Um, I'm just going to take off some of the surface. I'm not pushing hard because what I'm trying to do is, if there are any um, raised pieces, I'm trying to knock them off here at the same time as um, at the same time that I'm removing the scratches. Now, for the scratches, you have to push pretty hard, but for any little raised spot, like maybe your your fingerprint <laughs> is appearing in the clay, which happens. It happens. You're just going to, without much pressure at all, just kind of run along the surface and try to get a little more smoothing on the surface before you go ahead and paint it. Okay, I'm going to take a dry brush Go to your trash can and just sweep all that dust off. You can use an air can. Okay. You can use an air can if you want, or um, you can just let it go. The paint is going to cure a lot of potential issues um, that might come up and otherwise be a problem. So what I'm using, um, <laughs> I'm going to show you, but uh, basically it's just a typical flesh tone paint. Uh, this bottle's probably been on my shelf for a few years, so obviously you want to shake it up. Um, when I'm done with this base coat, which I'm just using this cheap acrylic as a base coat, because paper clay is very thirsty and it's going to suck up a lot of paint. And this will actually sort of seal my surface here. And after that, I'm going to use um, these Vallejo paints. Um, they're actually a little bit more heavily pigmented. They blend a little better. Um, you can blend a little bit of Floetrol into these. Um, I am using... This is my little container, so I don't have to go get this every time, which this is just um, 
Floetrol that they add to house paint to make it a little more fluid so that it will go through um, the spray, the paint sprayers that they paint houses with. Uh, a little bit goes a long way. Uh, for this base coat, I want the heaviest pigment that I can get, so um, I'm not going to add any Floetrol to that. But if I do add it to the other ones, it'll just be a small amount, like maybe half the amount of Floetrol to, or even a quarter of the amount of Floetrol to the paint that I'm using. Because paper clay, like I said, is a very thirsty paint. And you want to do this when you're not going to be interrupting yourself even. Because you really want to keep from having streak marks. And that will occur if you let it dry while you're trying to um, get your base coat on. And don't try to paint over the eyes and remove it um, because acrylic is not as forgiving as, uh, come on, <laughs> oh, I need more coffee, sorry. Acrylic paint is not as forgiving as oil paint and it is not as forgiving as a paint like uh, Vallejo because it has a flow medium in it already. Not that, and you can add more, whereas if you add um, a flow medium to something like a, a base coat acrylic, you're going to find that it doesn't cover as well. And it's kind of expensive. It's more, almost more expensive than your craft paint. So it's not really worth it. Just use the craft paint it, with its natural pigment level and just keep moving with your brush and try to get your coat on as evenly as you can. I'm using a big brush. Um, well, actually, technically, it's probably only a medium brush. But uh, you can use any size brush you want. But I find a bigger brush helps me to spread out the paint with um, fewer lines. And normally, I would not be talking while I'm doing this because I really, really do not want the, um, the paint lines to show. So you really have to keep moving. Oops, too much paint. Let's spread that around quick, quick, quick. Because that will, the paper clay will suck that moisture right out of that clay and leave you with kind of a mess, actually. Okay, and I'm going to paint coming down onto the back of board and onto the neck here, this whole neck, even where it's too big. Um, because when I put my decorations on, I don't want to have left any places unpainted. And I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat, especially up here on the forehead, because it's such a big area. And I know I probably missed something just in trying to go quickly. And the better my base coat, the less likely when I'm all done and things are drying that I will spot a white spot. Okay, so that pretty much is my base coat. And you can see from the camera that it looks better already. It's at least it has cured the um, the glare that was causing that whiteout on the previous videos. Okay, so we have a nice neutral flesh tone. I'm going to grab a Q-tip from over here. And I'm going to just try to get that off that I real quick because once you let it dry thoroughly, flatten that out into a little wedge so I can get closer. 
There we go. That's better. And be careful to only use something soft because you can scratch those lenses on the eyes. Okay, that looks pretty good. I probably will need this brush again with the flesh tone, but I'm just going to rinse it real quick. That's just it hitting the trash can, shaking the water off. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. You don't need tiny, but you want pretty small. And I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to add some paint around the inside of the eye. And I kind of use um, an unusual thing for my palettes. <laughs> I have saved water bottle caps from a million water bottles. I was told that you could melt these into something, maybe use it to make a mold box for uh, making a mold or something along those lines, but it stinks something awful when you heat it up. And I would just as soon not have anything else added to my house that smells bad. I already have seven cats. <laughs> Oh, just being honest. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Glow Trawl, which is not always easy to open. Oh, I think it's time for a new piece of cling wrap. That one has had better days. Okay, so I normally have a little spoon laying here, but I don't see it, so I'm going to use this to stir the Flow Trawl a little bit. And I'm going to put a little drop of Floetrol in each of these. Probably put a little too much in that one. Okay, Floetrol doesn't smell great either, so let's get that cap back on there. Now I keep that plastic wrap on there because this is an upcycled jar, and as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't seal well enough. So, I made a, there we go, wipe that off. I always try to put my tools back because otherwise they get in the way. Okay, so for in here in the eye, I want a purpley color. So probably not that one. I'm going to go with this um, Rojo Red. I'm going to use a little bit of brown to cool that off a little bit and well, do I want dark brown or light brown? Probably the dark brown. But again, this is um, pretty highly pigmented. Um, let's see, get that out of the way. Um, so I'm going to go back in first with my super readers, my five time reading glasses, and line this eye with just this flesh tone, the same flesh tone as before, and I'll get to those in a minute. I was getting ahead of myself. I thought for some reason I was going to the next step, but I was skipping ahead, so just going to paint it with the flesh tone because as I said, this is very thirsty material when you're working with paper clay. And this Vallejo paint is really expensive. And you'll use more of it than you think if you're working on a thirsty material. I'm trying to make sure my head is not in the way. There we go. Well, you're going to see my, my head in the corner there. Because... I need to get really close because my old eyes can't see that well anymore, so I have to put on a pair of five times readers over top of my regular reading glasses just to see what I'm doing, even on something this big, which isn't fun knowing how bad my eyes are getting. 
is probably the worst part. I fear that eventually I won't be able to do even something this size that requires painting because I just won't be able to see it to do it. So I am enjoying the process while I can see it. So this part can be a little bit tedious and just take your time, go slowly. Put that on an angle so I can see into it. This chair I'm sitting on is a little bit short. Okay. Might need a little more light. Almost got cloudy outside. A little more paint. Really good. Very thick paint. But that's not a bad thing. There we go. Just make sure you load up your brush with enough paint that it's kind of flowing into where it needs to go. See what I said about later on you'll find a white spot? They're starting to appear already. So that's why I haven't started with any other paint color yet because I want to make sure that I got that base coat thoroughly covered all in this same paint. Okay, I'll just feather that area just to make sure I don't have any thick paint lines. Okay, that looks pretty good. Other eye. Now, depending on how long this video goes. Oh, there I go again. Sorry, folks. <sighs> the light. Maybe I need to turn the light. There we go. I turned into the light so I could see what I was doing. And in the process, there we go. I took myself off camera. Okay. Can you see? I think you can see. Anyway, I'm getting right down into the eyelid. I'm going right to the edge of the eyeball with this flesh color. And then once that is in and dry, and then I can move on. Oh. If I go silent for a minute, it's just because I'm trying not to touch the eyeball with the paintbrush. Okay. Now rotate it around. And do the bottom lid. Let the paint do the work. Load your brush up with a fair bit of paint. Instead of trying to get the bristles down in the little nooks and crannies. And forcing the paint in. Don't put so much on the brush that it pulls. Because then you'll be trying to wipe it off your eyeball. And if you can see you have too much start on the edge, like I'm doing here, and then move inward. And move that paint. Now because this is paper clay, until you get it sealed with your first coat, and I'm going to call this primer, until you get your primer coat on and it's sealed, you cannot use the chalks like I've shown in other videos to add some um, subtle blushing. But once you get it sealed like this, you can assist the paint job with uh, chalks and it will hold. Now what I recommend when you use chalk um, is that you rouge it into the surface when you're doing polymer clay. You can't do that with this but you can seal 
the whole project with um, like a Mr. Super Clear matte or something, uh, matte paint. And that way you don't have um, that subtle blushing wiping off again. Okay. So I'm just looking at it up close with my super readers on. <laughs> Again, I'm still just perfecting this base coat. Using up the paint I have. And don't get too eager to get finished because you will mess up and you're going to leave yourself with a whole lot of unnecessary brush strokes because you're going to put a little too much paint in one spot and not notice and you're going to go back to try to smooth it out and it's already dry because this stuff will just keep sucking the moisture right out of it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Rinse that brush again. Okay, now I want to use this one for lining the eye. So I'm going to put a little bit of red and a little bit of brown just in the corner there. And maybe a little of this um, dark flesh, which has a neat little yellow tint to it. A little bit of yellow, tiny bit, goes a long way with that one. Okay, so now I'm going to take the tail end of my liner brush, because I don't want to mess up my bristles here, and stir these into this transparent Floetrol until it's really liquidy. And you can add more until you get it to a consistency where it doesn't form a bead on the bottom of the brush anymore. Okay, that's when it's pretty much it's thicker than ink. I don't know how to describe how thick this is, but and no, unfortunately, you cannot save this. Um, I had some little snap top plastic paint holders, and I put it in there thinking it was going to be okay and be there when I came back to it, but it was not. It was uh, a total mess. Okay, so now I'm going to go down into the eye here with this dark, actually it's still not fluidy enough, so I might add a little more Floetrol. Okay, try again. Again. Trying to keep you in the middle here. Okay, so, oh, if you have too much paint, just wipe it off and try to use just the tip. I don't know if you can see, but I am putting just the tiniest little tip of the paint. See if it'll show. Anyway, it's not showing, but just the tiniest tip of the paintbrush is going in here. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm lining the edge of the eyeball, not the lid itself yet. I'm just coming in 
I'm creating a little contrast for the eyeball. itself. Okay, turn it upside down, come up here and repeat. Now if you get it on the lid, don't worry about it. It's fine. because we're going to paint more. This is just to create... Oh, I have too much paint on there. Try again. Just a tip. I just want it all over the eyeball itself. Okay. Now, this color is pretty close to the next color I want, but it's a little bit too dark so I'm going to add some of this flesh color in here because I want to warm up the eyelid color but I don't want it as dark as it had been okay well, that looks looks about where I want it sorry my head in the road again Maybe a teeny bit more of this flesh color. And again, this still has the Floetrol in it. You notice I'm not pulling the entire contents of this in because this palette will also work for the other side. And this paint, because it has Floetrol, will take a lot more time to dry. All right, I'm just going to test this color and see if I like it for the lid itself. That's not hateful. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go back and repeat what I just did to the other eye. Nope. Why can't I get it just the tip? Because I can't see just the tip of the brush. I have to kind of feel it. A little bit of red. Just along the edge of the eyeball. See, on a glass eye, I wouldn't worry about this. And it's up to you. I, I like to try to keep my pieces kind of in an affordable range. So, I tend to be a little bit frugal with um, the stuff that I use. And I was able to get a whole bunch of acrylic eyes. Um, I bought them actually for a class I was teaching. And I had bought way more than I needed. So I have lots of them available. And then I got more. But I paid about a dollar a pair for them. Which, how can you beat that? And... Um, they come in handy for all kinds of projects, but you cannot bake them. So, I mean, you can, but they tend to warp, which is not advantageous. Because the whole point of using those instead of trying to sculpt out the eye and paint it in is that you don't have to paint them or tweak them or add UV gel or anything like that to them to try to repair the silly damage that you yourself caused by trying to bake them. Okay, and I'm going to bring a little teeny bit of that red up into the corner. Ugh! Floetrol. Excuse me. <laughs> a really bad habit of putting it in my mouth. The end of the paintbrush. It's a very, very bad habit. Okay, paint that little tear duct. 
above and below with the darker color. And you can make your own version of these colors, but basically it was a, a very dark red and a brown. And then to get the lighter color was a little bit of um, a flesh color. Now, our eyes are neither perfectly white, nor are the whites of the eyes perfectly clear. So I'm just putting a little bit of red tone around the tear duct and along the edge of the eye. It also creates an, a believable shadow on the corners of the eye. I have a dent here, must have made with a tool when I was sculpting. So bear with me a second here. I have to try to fill it in. Okay, looks okay. Now to this color, to color up the tear duct, this color along that mid. Stopping before, let's see if I can bring you down. Okay. Stopping um, before you get to the dark line that you added. Is my head in the way? Nope, but my hand is. Alright, how do I deal with this? Hold on. I'm going to try something. As long as the cord will let me bring this around so you're looking over my shoulder. Let's see. That's an improvement. Can you see? Well, you're just going to have to look at my nose so I can see. Okay. going to try not to bump the camera, but it is literally right in front of my nose. Okay, that looks pretty good. Come down here. Trying to keep it where you can see it and I can see it. And this is not makeup, this is just the warmer pigmentation that we have on that lid. Okay, keep going. I may speed up this paint job. I want to try to keep this to a 30 minute video, which we already are at 30 minutes, so maybe it'll be one hour. But I figured this paint job will probably take me two hours at the pace I'm going. that a little, dry it off, come back in here to this dark, I'm just going to come in 
this corner here and warm that but don't you do it I must put it in my mouth again Floetrol is nasty if you're like me and you have one of those bad habits this will cure you of it <laughs> it will cure you of it okay let's see soften that up a little oh no I should cover her in cling wrap because I'm inevitably going to have paint on me as I go through here. Okay, make sure this is dry. Back in the flesh. Try to get rid of that. I'm wetting it with the other paint color. Hoping I can wipe it off because that would be a raised spot. And it's sticking around. Okay, because the paint was stuck on my hand. Now don't wipe too hard, but you can use the other paint, the flesh color paint, to help you soften up that little paint blemish that just peeled off of my finger. There you go. A few swipes and it's gone. Okay, so I'm going to do myself a favor real quick and back you up a little bit. There we go. And just check my hands. Oh. Let's see. Oh. If you have a pack of baby wipes, you have a portable sink. Otherwise, you have to walk out of the room, wash your hands. and then come back and try not to get distracted from what you were doing by the cats and <laughs> everything else that are out there just waiting for your attention okay so this color I'm gonna save because inevitably I will need to use it again as I do the makeup part so what I do is I take some tape and I cover it crisscross press it down and normally I would mark it oh, do I have a marker? I have a marker and that would be eye liner now that just covering that right there gives me an extra 10 minutes to get back to it. All right, is that still got paint? Yeah, I didn't rinse it. You can ruin your brushes real quick by not rinsing them off, so sorry, but I had to. And that also. Okay, so back to the face. And I'm trying to keep the face centered for you. There we go. <clears throat> coming along now I'm gonna switch and grab one of these four let's see we're gonna use this Vallejo skin tone which is a little more um, a little more orange I want to say than the um this flesh tone from americano the base the base color we'll call it the base color and i'm using basic skin tone by vallejo and a little bit of um this rose what's well, brown rose if you can see that yeah brown rose Okay, so this color I'm mixing up right now is, um, I'm going to mostly like highlight and shadow with this color because it's way warmer than that color. And I'm going to use a makeup sponge to do that. So I'm just going to load it on here like this. 
take a little piece of tape, like a mini palette, pick some more up, about like that, and It's not a huge difference in color, is it? Pretty similar. Yep. All right. So let's go for broke here. Try not to mess this up. Actually, you know what? I'm so determined not to mess this up. I'm going to apply the paint to the stick. Just a little bit of red. That may even be too much. Take some off. I'm going to apply just a little bit of red in there. So I'm trying to make a blushing color. That looks a little, little better. Okay, let's see how that goes. And you can mix more of this paint if you want. I just, I don't like wasting it. I don't like wasting anything. Lifelong recycler. Okay. Still not as red as I want. Okay. Put that back up. Better to add too little and just keep experimenting until you get the color you want. Then to put too much and then you have to add more of everything to cool it back off again. Bring the color back down to a softer, more, there we go. Now we've got a nice pink. We'll start here on the cheek. I'm just warming up how flat this color is. I want it subtle. I don't want it drastic. Come up this side of, oh man. Up the side of the nose. Where did that and off there? Thank you very much. The side of the nose. Tip of the nose. A little on the chin. With this makeup sponge, it spreads out the color really nicely so you can. Um, get the coverage that you want without having to get down in there. Okay, now I need this brush just to get in and try to soften my edges. Now you can use a little bit of um, Floetrol to do this as well so that you don't end up with um, a makeup line before you're ready for one. You can just kind of wet your surface a little bit with Floetrol then pick up a little bit of your color and apply it. And if it's too much, it'll wipe off. And if it's not enough, you just pick up some more color and come back again. And again, this is still not makeup. I'm just blushing. Just putting a little bit of lifelike color into her face. I'm trying not to overdo it. Which, okay, up onto the bridge of the nose. A little bit along the jawline. And the camera is your friend. The camera always can see things that your eye cannot. For example, I don't, did not bring it up into the temple. And I am adding a little bit of Floetrol to the paint 
to come up in here into the temple area and feather that out okay and the temple area on this side okay and you can use I'm still not sure what color her hair is going to be. I'm going to take a little tiny bit of brown. Put that there. Gather some of that flow troll. Thin that brown out. Okay. Oops, you know what I didn't do? I did not finish the crease of the eye here. Just to uh, warm it up a little bit. Okay, and if you got carried away, you can always go pick up a little bit of um, this flesh color again and go back just make sure you don't have a lot and go back and feather it okay let's back you up a little bit again when you're that close it's hard to really see the colors okay <clears throat> run out of this flow trowel I pulled out and I'm going to warm up the neck color and spread that chin color out a bit. Okay, I kind of like this color. I might go ahead and put it on as a base for the lips. Nah, it's too light. But I do want to come at the underside of the nose here down the septum and into this little crease here, little float trawl. It's an equalizer so you can spread it. Okay. Now, ooh, look how much is on the edge of that bottle. It's disaster waiting to happen. Let's try again. For a lip color, I want darker than that. So a little bit of this brown and that red, a little bit of drama I want with her lip color. Oh, can you see the oh, camera? Let's try to, there we go. Sorry, I had you too close still. Now we shall soon see if this color is too dark or not. It's kind of a, a rosy plum. This brush may be too small. Getting a lip liner. Oh, wait a minute. I know why things are blurry. I took those off. There we go. Now I can see. Is my head in the way? Okay. Now, no matter how you sculpted it, you can, if you've ever watched any of those YouTube videos that explain to you how you can make your lips look bigger or smaller with makeup you can make them whatever size you want but I usually tend to sort of follow oops the line that I made when I sculpted oh this brush it's too small it's not cooperating because of it. 
I'm trying to make it cover more ground than it's capable of. Alright, I have a better one here. Let's try this. A little bit bigger brush. I don't have a ton of paint though, so I think that's why my brain was like, yeah, just use the other one. And I start with the liner, and then I pull down into the lip just because I like the look of those little lines that it leaves behind. Okay, I'm going to go back to the other brush for the corner just because I want it to sink into that corner very gently. Now, I just made a mistake because that brush was still wet. And I just dripped very wet paint into that corner, but that's okay. It is fixable, and that is why you retain your flesh color in case you need it. Okay. Let's have a look. Hmm. I might go a little bigger. <laughs> After I just said, I like to follow the line I sculpted. I might go a little bigger. Okay, it helps if you rest your hand, which I can't do right now because I have nothing here to rest it on. So I'm having to. Okay. Now the side up. Okay. That's pretty good. All right, to the bigger brush. And look at the bottom lip. I'm going to turn it upside down. I have to decide where I want the bottom lip to end because I didn't cut a line there. Well, actually, I think I did, but I had to sand and that removes material. Oh, this Floetrol is creeping into my lip color. Hmm. Okay, we're getting there. Now the hardest part when you didn't sculpt a lip line is following it and keeping it semi-symmetrical. So if this is a little wonky, be assured. If yours goes a little wonky, be assured that is fixable. Oh, yes, I'm still on. Okay, I'm going to use a smaller brush because I'm afraid I'm going to go over these lines too much. Okay, I definitely went further into the corner on that side, so let's bring this side out a little. And just go back and forth until you have it the way you want it, or until it looks like Angelina Jolie, whichever you get to first. Of course, if you wanted Angelina Jolie to begin with, then you don't have to worry. Because you will get there. One adjustment at a time. I'm just shooting for a nicely shaped, symmetrical as I can get it, set of lips. And that side is a little fuller through here. Concentrate your pigment at the lip line. And then if it's too much, pull it into, yeah, I think I like that color. Okay. Yeah. Get a good saturated bit. And 
Again, pulling towards the lip line carefully, because if you go over, you're going to have to fix that. Nope. Just filling in. Okay, that looks pretty good. Clean my brush. Now, let's look again. Pretty good. I have, where's this tool? This is just a dental pick. I'm just using it to clean up where I think I had gotten paint on the eye. Nope, not working. Let's try the Q-tip again. Uh, I will go back later and gloss these eyes. Don't want too much of that. If you rub something off of the eye, just blow a little bit of air in there and it will, at least it should, take care of getting rid of whatever it was so it's not down in the paint. Okay. I'm just grabbing all the tools. <laughs> that was just a little um, Zacto blade. Right. Obviously I don't want the paint on the pupil or the iris. So I want that to be nice and clear and avoid the lips. Watch where you put in your hands since they're still wet. I hate to use a metal tool, but this is not cooperating. There it goes. So on glass eye, I can scratch away with a sharp tool like this and not have to worry at all that I'm going to damage the eye. But with acrylic, you can scratch it pretty easily. I know. I could save myself a lot of problems by spending 10 or $15 a pair on the eyes. But I have to add that to the price tag of the thing I'm selling. And I am not always comfortable telling people that the piece I'm selling is, you know, five or six hundred dollars on account of I went crazy with my supply costs. That would be a little more frugal and keep the price under three hundred dollars. That way people can actually afford to buy my art. And not have to wait until a special occasion to get it. Okay, now I don't know if you can see what I was shooting for is the way a natural person's skin tone is, which is a little blotchy, unless you're wearing like makeup to even everything out, you're going to have multiple color variations going on. Now, if it's too blotchy for you, you can soften it with a very small amount of the flesh color where you have um, like here I went a little nuts I don't want the jaw of that again I'll just use that piece of tape I have to cut a new one down anyway and just soften. I didn't want that much color on the jaw or the cheek. Okay, so that's doing pretty good. down the bridge of the nose. 
Okay. So that is that. Set these two inside of one another. Get rid of that piece of tape. Put down a new one. <clears throat> okay. Make sure I'm still centered. Okay. Now I'm going to I think put a little bit of this dark color. Mix it with some more Floetrol here. I'm going to go up in the nostrils with that. If you can see, I'm just adding some color up inside of here. Get some more Floetrol. So I want it very light, just a wash, really. I'm not trying to make it dark, dark, but uh, just adding some shadow. And the inside of your nose isn't brown or black. That's actually the shadow creating that, the impression that it's brown or black. So I'm trying to use the pale color. There you go. That looks pretty good. Transparent color, not pale. Transparent color that the Floetrol gives me. Where I get the benefit of the color. I'm going to add a little bit to the tip of the nose here. Again, just of that translucent color. Okay. And I may go again. A little bit of that color. Very transparent. I'll come in, in the corner of the mouth and just soften that color through there as well. Okay. It's subtle and it doesn't show on camera that much, but I can see it and I like it. So I might even add a little of this redder color in the, around the tear duct. Okay, this was just blushing your paper clay, getting your skin colors on. And you can shadow heavier up here where your hairline is going to be. You just have to decide um, what color you want to use. I'm normally, oh, that was risky. <laughs> I might pick a little bit of that up. I didn't shadow up here at all. Pulling that red. Pull it towards. You can also take your uh, warmer color and load your brush up and do the flick and it will give you little specks and you can use the lighter color and flick again. I don't want to do that on this one, but it gives you a nice effect where you get these little specks of color. I don't know if you can see them on there. Yeah, it's really hard to show that subtle 
that subtle coloring. If you want to add texture, you can do it the same way. You just use your flesh color to go back and flick that flesh color on. And it gives you kind of a, a texture to the skin. Okay, I probably will tweak this before I add her makeup. Um, but you can see where I added. That's where the hairline will fall. And you can take a little teeny bit of Floetrol, come back, and just brush over that whole forehead like that, which will get rid of that line that was there just now. That Floetrol is very useful for helping smooth out your transition lines when you end up with them by accident. It just makes a wash. And that kind of, it's wet now so you can't really see it, but it neutralized her color where it was um, a little harsh. So, you know, I would from here paint eyebrows, paint her makeup, but as I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to decorate her, I'm really leaning towards this, which I showed in the video. Um, being like a an additional nautical sort of looking piece. Let me unhook it. But I sat it on her like this. And I kind of fell in love with that. I was thinking putting it on her um, forehead, but I kind of dig it like that. And then maybe some kind of additional hair underneath, but yeah, this was just a broken necklace. Useless to anybody else, but for me, since I'm going to cut them up and use them for jewelry, for pieces and dolls, they're perfect. Okay, so that's it for doing your, um, your blushing. Now it's time to do the makeup. So we'll start on that section now. I went ahead and did more contouring and I'm actually going to go ahead and cover it again even though I'm not going to do it live on the video because I already did it. And one of the things I do after I get done using my um, Vallejo paints, and I love this stuff, it's heavily pigmented, it's made for miniatures. So a little bit goes a long way. It gives you excellent coverage without having to be thick or do multiple layers. Um, you can thin it with, um, I use Floetrol to keep it if you want to get a little bit of a translucent coverage someplace where you just want to blend to lighten a pigment that you applied. And um, like here, I got a little carried away with her eyebrows, so I am going to fix that and show you how I would how I approach that um, and that will be using my lightest color um, flesh that they have and a little bit of this rose brown and I'll show you how how I would do that but um, as far as doing the contouring what you want is I have two. This is pastels, and then this is your standard artist pigment chalks. These are more heavily pigmented than these are, and both have a good purpose, but the artist pigment chalks tend to be a little heavy, so they're really good for shadowing and contouring. And these are better for like blushing and do adding subtle colors. So I maintain a good supply of both. Um, this one face has, has multiple different kinds of coloring on it. Um, and I also add different hues and it's really hard. Let me see if I can get the color to show. 
yeah, you can kind of see all the different colors now. There are orange shades, there are pink shades, there are some red shades, some brown shades. There's even some yellow because our skin isn't one color. It's definitely multicolored. And I try to do the contouring by using um, multiple different colors in light layers. I have some different brushes that I have taken and turned into, um, like some of these are paint brushes, some are makeup brushes. These were makeup brushes. And they're super soft and they're kind of my favorite. <laughs> you can see I had used it for green. Oops, there goes her test hair. Um, for green coloring on this little dude that I made. I added some color. Yeah, so you can't even see the green in the camera. And I really don't know what to do about that. Let me try adjusting this. Nope, now he's all green. Maybe go up. Nope, too much. Okay, well, <laughs> he's mostly green and yellow. He's got pink as his uh, contouring. But anyway, uh, I use a big squishy soft brush like this makeup brush and I will pick up this is my favorite it is a I want to call it terracotta and this is the color that I would oopsie that I would use in say this area here to contour along the nose and to bring some shape to the look of under the eye I would bring it along under this part right here because this part sticks out and it creates sort of a shadow naturally so I would come across here with a little bit of a contour color and you see how it immediately pops in your picture so you just throw that in there like that I'm gonna try to do this without overdoing the coloring I have on her now because I really like where it is and this darker shading here pretty much stops midway across the um, eyebrow. So you would start in the middle of the eyebrow and come back towards the nose. There's usually a bit of a lighter spot right uh, where the tear duct is. So I try not to get it too heavy there. There's um, going to be a slight purplish tint to the lid itself. And it will be a lighter color than the contour area, which is mostly created by shadow. But since even with this being um, a three-dimensional face, it's still not going to catch a sh natural shadow the way it would in a photo. So if you go a little bit heavier on it, then it's hit with flash photography and you don't lose all of the look of the contouring of the face. I'm actually going to move this these little wefts out of the way for the moment. Um, and then I'll switch to a smaller brush like this one and always um, kind of flick it and make sure there's not a buildup of color from uh, previous use. Put them back in there. And I'm going to switch to a lighter um, color now and apply some yellow. Now, our skin tends to have a yellowish tint um, at the sides of the forehead before you get to the temple, which will have a darker color. So you can apply some yellow in this area here and then over to the side of the eye and sometimes even up into the eye, you'll see yellow pigmentation. And don't overdo, you don't want to make them look jaundiced, but it, it is a color that's in your skin naturally, so adding a little is a good thing. And then around the mouth here, I would add a little, uh, not in the center, but more to from the nostril to the corner of the lip. And then you'll also see it come down from the lower corner of the mouth to either side of the chin and very lightly. You don't want to overdo. I also put a little bit of yellow going from the uh, be beneath the, the cheek in the contour line. 
which also helps take that terracotta color down a little bit so it doesn't look so dark, but you still get that nice heavy shading. All right, so there's your application with the yellow, which helps to warm the face color up too, makes it look nice and sunny and golden. And this one, let me make sure it's not too... You, if you have a can of air, you can also do that. Just make sure that you don't uh, shake the can or anything first so it doesn't fill up. I have some as big as this that I've never used yet because they're a little big for the size I work with. Uh, but for this I, this brush, I'm going to, going to add some color to the cheek here and a little bit to the forehead. Um, and what I like to use is a bright pink and a soft pink. Heavier on the soft pink, very little on the bright pink. You can almost see that there's both on this. So you want to come turn it sideways and very lightly. You're almost tapping at first just to see what comes off. And then when you see that it's not too much, you can brush and kind of rouge it in back and forth just to add that little kiss of a youthful pink to the face. And again, she's already got color, so I don't want to go overboard. So I'm just kind of tapping to see how much is on the brush because it's stained from years of use. And you can't really tell how much is on it. And I'll also use another brush, which this is just a brush similar to this one. But what I did with it is I took and chopped the bristles short so that they're stronger. They're not uh, going to bend over. Now I'm going to take this terracotta color again and I'm going to come up under the nostril. Not up on it, but under and along the edge of the nose itself. And I'm just going to contour here and come up the nose here on the side, which contours and gives some definition to the shape, the tip of the nose there. I'm going to hit the septum and then the other nostril here. Now I go in the nose with a really small brush like this, which if you can make it out, it's fanned out and it protects the, um, the sculpt from the, um, the metal part. And I just took and pressed it into a board and kind of rotated it like this until I had it so that it kind of looks like a mushroom where it overlaps the sides. Now I go deep in the nostril and I'm going to use a dark, dark brown. I'm going to pick it up all the way around and go up into the nostril and just give it a little twirl. And this just accents the nostril and gives it a more natural shadow because it's going to be dark colored in there. So if the camera sees it or the person viewing it sees it, it doesn't look strange. I also add some darker pigment into the corner of the mouth here and that could be that dark brown as well. I'm just kind of like going over what I already did because with the, the paint and then the chalk, you have to be careful that you don't scratch the paint. Because this all got gets sealed. Um, well, actually, I think I already did seal this. But I'm going to paint again and then cover the lashes and the eyes and seal it again. <coughs> and then I took the dark brown and the black just on one side of this puffy little brush. And I came in and did the crease line with it just to um, make it look like makeup and not paint. I'm just softening that line. And I used the dark brown. Nope, that's the maroon brown. I used the dark brown, which is burnt umber, in this. And I took a fine line paintbrush like this one, 
and I went ahead and did a heavy, uh, not a heavy, a uh, fine line crease to really make it stand out because it's going to be behind the lashes and I wanted to make sure that it stood out nicely and something else you can do if you want is um, use a lighter paint to go in and add just below the crease a little bit of the lighter paint which is what I did and let's make sure we're not losing you in the glare um, just to make sure that there's some uh, shape to that eyelid because on pic in pictures which is a lot of what I focus on for doing the um, the paint job uh, making sure that they look great in pictures because they always look great in person but photographing them is not the easiest so you have to learn to work not only for how they look in person but how they look in photos okay so next I take the terracotta again um, and I have two different shades one is darker than the other uh, the slightly darker one I use for contouring here and here and like up here I'll bring in some of the lighter contour terracotta color which is a brownish red which is perfect for skin tones and then I'll take some of the darker again and coming back here from the ear again I tap to see how much I have on the thing and I just come from the back towards the front not the other way around that way if I have too much on here I don't lay it on so heavy that you can see I want it to be light to be an indication of it being there and not a ridiculous amount and I just kind of tap on the chalk and try to pick a small amount up you can add 10 times if you want to get it where you want it instead of trying to do it all at once and then you add too much and you're kicking yourself because to get it off you basically strip the whole thing down to white again and that is not what you want all right and i washed out in color again i swear it's like this thing gets brighter i don't know what it is <sighs> well I don't know, maybe I need to go with a dark background underneath of what I'm working on. Maybe I'll try that on the next video. I'll, I'll grab the black tile that I have downstairs and see if it looks better without the white background behind it. But uh, let's see, what else? So contouring the nose, I usually take some of the brown that you see here or you can do it with the terracotta. It depends on how much contour look you want to do. But with her nose, I wanted to slenderize the tip a little. So I came in with a little bit of brown to bring some roundness to the tip of the nose. Um, and I may have actually gone a little heavy on it. But I came on this side of the nose, on this side of the nose, and it has like a curve to it on purpose which artificially rounds the tip of the nose and I did the same here under the nostril I brought that up and brought this up which minimizes that tip underneath and I came back with a light colored paint when I tried to reduce what I did with those uh, <laughs> with those eyebrows they were definitely running amok and I want to put a little color back in there. So I'm going to go back to my pastels, which are softer, have a little less pigment in them. And I'm just going to add some pink in here. And like I said, I'll go again and again looking at it and trying to get it to the color I want it to be and sometimes I'll go back and forth to get it where I think it'll look good okay so I'll post a, um, a picture of a really good contour map that'll kind of help you see where you would want to add contours to the face 
to get a more natural um, human complexion. And if you remember, this started out stark white. So you can see there's a vast improvement in the coloring. Oh, that shows the coloring quite nicely. Yeah, it's definitely, this light is too bright, maybe. Maybe turn it off. Yeah, no, that's not really helpful. <laughs> okay, but, uh, so there's that bit. And then I'm going to go ahead with the Vallejo paint. And I'm going to take a little bit of this, uh, the uh, light flush. And I mean a little, it's not going to require a lot. A little bit of this goes a long way when all you're doing is adding a, oops, too much, adding a touch of color or putting a thin wash layer over top. Get that out of the way. Crack this open. And grab my paintbrush. I'm going to pick up some of the Floetrol. Drop that right in there. Because I want thin. I want this to be sort of a wash. So that I can just keep adding a little layer at a time. Until I get the coverage that I want without messing up my entire paint job that I already did. Okay. Now is that too light? Too dark? We'll see. The other thing, uh, a little tip. Your... Um, makeup brushes. I apply my paint with these makeup sponges and every time you use one you kind of look at it and you're like oh that's no good now but that's not true. Grab yourself a sharp pair of scissors get it all the way up into the end of the scissors and one clean cut now you have a clean makeup pad again and you can if you're really frugal use the opposite side of the first piece. You can also on a small head cut them in half this way and now you have two okay so I'm actually going to do that because why not and I'm going to pick up some of this paint and then tap it on the paper next to it and I'm going to come in here and very carefully I'm going to blot in between the eyes here and come up onto the forehead a little bit. And if it is getting too much, just dab with your finger and dab away some of the material. Or the paint, I should say. The paint. And turn it and come back down the nose again. So I just want to blot out that um, brow and it's being difficult so I'm going to go ahead and do this which I'm not a big fan of putting a heavy heavy line there but um, I don't want to also damage the, the lash the uh, brow lines that I made okay now this will just add the look of a little bit more light hitting the forehead which it does light will hit the forehead it'll hit the tip of the nose and it'll hit the chin so if you add a little bit of light colored paint again always blot it a little bit of light colored paint it looks natural to add that and this has a lovely matte finish um, which helps keep you from going over or under okay yeah that might be a little too light I'm gonna come and maybe add what do I want uh, we'll go with a little teeny bit of basic Good to make a mistake so you can see how I would fix it, which might help you when it's your time to fix it. I'm just going to pull a little bit of this sunny orange into here because I don't want to get carried away. I'm going to add it to 
this with the paintbrush. I'll come back again. I'm going to lift this and hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. And this pouncing that I'm doing is going to help spread this color around the forehead so I can get rid of this blotchy look that I have right now. But then I have this solid patch of very light white. Bring in a little bit of this pink. And I'm going to put this on here just in one spot because I want to introduce some pink back into this area, but I want it blotchy, not solid color. Because, like I mentioned before, our skin is not one solid color unless we're wearing some pretty heavy beauty makeup. Okay, well that is much better. Let's see. All right, camera. Can you see the coloring that that gives you? I mean, you can see from my hand, there's, there's shades of blue, there's greens, there's browns, there's, you know, a number of different tones, not just your flesh color. I'm Italian, so there's always a little green in there. <laughs> Okay, why do you keep doing that? Ugh. Let's try it without this. Well, that's kind of working. I don't want the colors to be too harsh, but I don't want them to disappear on camera. So that's her so far. And let's see. I was trying some hair colors on with her. Let me get rid of this stuff. I just don't want it. Put those up there. I might need those later. Put that aside. What I do when I do hair on a piece like this is I make a uh, little wefts of hair, and then I can get them down in where I want them. Say that piece might be down here where the ear, for example, would be. And then you can add in another weft above that. And you just glue this right to the head. And you keep layering them. You're going to take and put them about an inch apart. And you apply glue to the hair piece itself. But you also apply glue. And when I say glue, what I use is um, fabric tack. Oh, there we go. I use fabric tack. Why are you so look it's even washing out the chalk colors. Pesky thing. Anyway, uh, you can also use like a crafter's pick glue or uh, tacky glue or Elmer's glue. But I like this because it dries pretty quickly. Uh, the fabric tack dries pretty quickly. And what I would do, I haven't settled on this color 100%, but when you're dealing with something that's not a whole head, it may not seem obvious how to accomplish it without using so much hair that you end up with a big, huge poof that maybe wasn't your intention. But if you take the wefts, and I'll show you how I make those, um, you're going to, I use uh, Tibetan sheep fur, and it comes on a pelt like this. And I just take a small little pinch of hair. And again, this is, you know, a tip for a beginner more so. Most um, advanced artists have used all kinds of hair, fur and natural and synthetic. So they kind of know how to do this. But the tip is for people who have never done it before. And this is true of any kind of pelt type fur that you might want to use. You just trim it right off the pelt. You see how short I cut it? I pulled the whole length of the hair. And then if it has an undercoat, um, I would recommend removing it. You just grab 
down here and just pull that undercoat out because that just adds to the thickness and if you're trying to keep it thin you don't want that plus it leaves that fuzzy flyaway look okay so you just take and get these t gathered together as close to the end as you can take your scissors and I normally would not do this right where I'm working because they make a mess um, just snip them so they're all the same length and carefully get that out of the way because it will get on everything and I take the fabric tack let it get down to the tip of the bottle and I replaced its normal tip with one that came off of a, I think it was a snow a fake snow that was self-adhesive but they sell these little tips in uh, some of the craft stores and it see how fine a bead comes out of it it's a very very small amount then you're going to take the tip and kind of massage the ends of the hair make sure that every little hair in that weft is in that glue I'm not squeezing anymore I'm just using that tip to make sure that they're all cinched together now if you don't mind getting glue all over you the next thing I do is grab and sort of pinch them together and again make sure that every hair is now stuck in that weft if you're going to be covering a head you can use a bigger uh, a bigger weft than this and spread it out so you have what looks like track like the the underside of a wig would be Let's see. I've been kidnapping hair from this thing but do you see how the the hair is sewn in in straight lines each of those straight lines can be removed and used and applied to the head in a similar fashion to the way they're applied to the wig you you lay down one line you go up a little bit and you lay down another line you go up a little and you lay down another line and on and on until you cover the whole head with your little weft um, with curly hair I like to go to small smaller and smaller wefts and then I'll apply them in a grid pattern but basically a straight line add more glue another straight line and I would add glue say here but also add glue coming down the cheek a little bit because we have hair that grows on our face in front of the ear and it comes down to about a third of the way down the ear so just bring the glue down here add your glue to the weft itself I'm going to try not to actually stick this because this one's still sticky um, you're going to add it up here and then when you tap it into that other glue the inner hairs will stick to the face the outer hairs will still be out so you get the illusion of a ton of hair but you don't have that big bulkiness that uh, you may not necessarily want now if you want a big you know lion's mane thickness of hair then by all means just keep layering until you get that really full gorgeous mane of hair um, for this purpose with it being flat backed I don't want so much that it it looks out of place now I'll probably make it a little thicker than this I might use a piece say that size for that bottom area because that'll be it that's the full length of what her hair will be um, if I wanted to make it longer I could add another piece down here but once you get to the uh, the nape of the or the the bottom of the jaw the top of the neck that's where hair wouldn't would stop growing so that's pretty much it if you want longer hair I would use a longer hair <laughs> not try to stack it like I'm doing anyway so you keep going when you come up here you repeat the same process you add your glue to the weft glue to the hair and you see I would come up to here and leave a gap but cover the whole area in glue so that when I stick this weft it does the same thing it it 
is stuck up here, but it covers that whole area. But it's not like inhuman thick. And then again, repeat with another weft. And then repeat with, this one's really tiny for some reason, with another weft. And you just continue on until you get to the top of the head. And normally, I'm just going to pull these out for demonstrative purposes. When I get to the top, um, I take and glue it from the back of the head, like down in the hole here, and then let it fall forward. And I will cover the top of the head back here with glue all the way up to where I want the hairline to be. And I will stick the hair down to it. And then if I want the top of the head to be thicker, I can just keep adding a couple of wefts until I get however thick I want it up here. When I go the opposite direction, I will take a weft and turn it the other way. And it's going to go in not straight, but at an angle, which automatically creates the look of a part. And again, you're going to glue down over here, but always start from the bottom and work your way up, kind of like uh, shingles on a roof. And you can make the wefts ahead of time, or you can make them as you go. Some people will use a glue like um, a water-based glue like these and cover the head in glue and then bring dry hair to it and press it into the glue. And, and that works. Um, I find that I end up with a lot of flyaway hair, whereas when I do this and that little trick that I do where I blunt cut, blunt cut the um, piece and I use my glue tip and massage the hair at the end of it to um, make sure that every single piece here has the... Um, has the glue on it so there's there's no there's no loose hairs here nothing's pulling out but I was trying to figure out her hair color what what her hair color is going to be and I think I decided that I like this piece of jewelry as a headpiece for her I'm still trying to figure out if that's the right hair color or not but that'll be another video for another um, I did take and add some of this track eyelash to her front and bottom um, I have a video on my YouTube channel already that shows how I um, apply these and I use UV gel to do it because it does not dry until you tell it to dry. So you can go ahead and put a tiny drop in that corner, adhere that end of it to the eye, and then when it's attached and it won't pull out of place, you can apply the rest of the UV gel to the rest of the underside of the lid, stick the lash in, get it fitted, get it positioned, and then hit it with your um, UV flashlight and that cures it like a little tack weld and then you uh, can do the other side and then put this in your um, UV oven I have a little nail oven that will finish curing the UV and then go ahead and add your lower lashes the same way um, pretty inexpensive lashes you can trim the lower lash, which I did with these, try not to lose this, um, real easy. You just take, because they're too long for a lower lash, when they are the length of the upper lash, you just take them and hold your scissors at an angle to the lash and just snip, move over a few lashes, leaving one or two long ones, snip again, and then keep repeating that like a serrated knife blade sort of look, which thins them out so that you have, I don't know if you can see, 
a more natural lower lash look where the top lashes are very thick and full and the lower lashes are shorter and thinner. But that's how you can achieve both looks with the same uh, lashes. It's pretty easy to do. Just make sure you have a good sharp pair of small scissors to use. Okay, well that's it for this video. I thought I would have her completed by the time I edited the video, but she's not fully finished, but this is her progress as you can see. Um, I love this how this little crown idea turned out with the, the seashell, but she's still a work in progress and uh, the video for the painting portion is done. I did not do a video on the finishing. It just, it's, um, I'm sure it's something everybody's going to do differently. If you're interested in how that part gets done, let me know, and I'll see if I can throw a video together for that. Thank you for watching. The, um, the video was uh, a little longer than I thought it would be, but I, I tried to edit it down where I could. Um, if you want to see future videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon and YouTube will let you know that I've uploaded a new video. And um, please give the video a like. Uh, that's my pretty much my only feedback as the, you know, it's not like the channel gets a ton of people. So for me to know if you're enjoying the content, you kind of have to give it a like. But I appreciate it. And... Um, I don't know why I say but. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And um, you guys have a great day. And I will see you next time.